Tanzania. Welcome to Tanzania, a part of Africa that many dream to visit, which is home to nature's finest creations, such as Mount Kilimanjaro, the Serengeti, and the Paradise Island of Zanzibar. Situated in East Africa, Tanzania is the largest country in the region, and it is not just a destination, but a fusion of cultures. With over 120 tribes calling this land home, Tanzania is a vast and diverse country, full of so many varying landscapes and animals making it an attractive place for all types of adventurers. This video covers many incredible places to visit while in Tanzania and they are not in any specific order from best to worst so make sure you stick around until the end so you don't miss out. Anyways let's jump right in. More fire! More, more water. water! More water! More fire! Nine stop! Up, up to, to the, the top! top. Right, so we are cruising through the uh, Serengeti and it's just unbelievable. There's got to be thousands of zebras that are right in front of us just grazing no problem at all with us just chilling here the Serengeti is home to approximately 70 large mammal species and a diverse array of over 500 bird species we've got a bunch of flamingos right here but it's kind of an eerie place there's so many bones all over the ground because this is feeding area when the wildebeests are getting themselves some water its name comes from the Maasai language, meaning endless plains. Guys, this is insane. We've been cruising for probably 45 minutes. So many wildlife spottings going down this area. And you really truly feel like endless plains. But the cool part about this versus like plains, you know, in the United States as an example, is you have mountains far out in the plains. Meaning whopping 30,000 kilometers squared, which is 12,000 square miles, including the Serengeti National Park and many wildlife reserves. The second greatest terrestrial animal migration in the world makes the Serengeti one of Africa's seven natural wonders. We unfortunately did not get to experience it, but I will tell you, even not experiencing the migration, you see so many animals, you almost feel like you're experiencing the migration. Anyways, the Serengeti is known for its lion population and let me tell you this absolutely proved true during our safari as we saw so many of them guys we are literally like a few feet away from a lion and there's two more lions right here it's insane we have a lion just chilling right there with another lion right here they're used to the humans being around so they don't mind when we pull up in the safari jeep one thing I want to mention is this video is not sponsored, but this video is in collaboration with my new brand, which is Perception. It's all about changing perceptions of the world one country at a time. So if you guys want to check out my new clothing brand that literally just launched this year in 2024, you can check it out in the link in the description below and it would be a great way to support this channel. Number two on the list is to discover Tarangiri National Park, which is filled with a diverse range of wildlife and nature's wonders. That is a massive baobab bao tree. Tanzania's most astonishing scenery and biggest wildlife concentrations are at Tarangiri National Park. Pretty incredible to see as we're, as we're just driving through here, all the animals are so used to the Jeep Safari. So they see us driving by, you know, like where I come from in Wisconsin, if a deer sees you from like this far, especially with a car, like driving by it it's gonna take off running but they're just so used to humans kind of just cruising through here that they let you just drive by as long as you're not making too much noise oh, we've got zebras crossing over right in front of us guys this is how close we are that's kind of like a little guy basically they were on the other side because there's a pond so the zebras were trying to get themselves over to the pond but they had sensed the lion wasn't too far away it's right up here on the tree we have a super starling it's an exotic looking bird with like this turquoise blue Mom's coming after him. Hey, keep running, keep running. Oh, 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 they're fighting. Whoa. <laughs> Terengiri is a stone's throw away from the fast-paced town of Arusha, and its Tiri is the sixth largest park in Tanzania and spans a whopping 2,850 kilometers squared. The Terengiri River, which draws elephants and other animals, gives the park its name, and of course, game richness. Visitors are often treated to the sight of diverse animals congregating around the river, which is exactly what we experienced as the elephants walked right next to our jeep when you look at those elephants i mean they're a pretty scary looking animal yet also you know beautiful at the same time guys right now this is insane we have a massive massive elephant coming this way holy moly look at this thing 
Number three on the list is to visit the city of Arusha. It is the hub of the Northern Safari Circuit in Tanzania and sits at the base of the stunning Mount Maru. There are amazing restaurants as well as marketplaces, historic and colonial architecture, and contemporary comforts like Wi-Fi coffee shops, along with great accommodations you can stay at. Number four on the list is to live like the Maasai tribe. I am being crowned. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah. The Maasai tribe continues to live in accordance with old age customs, largely untouched by modernity. How long does it take to build a house? Uh, two weeks. We've got a bed right there. We've got a small little air hole coming in. So it's such a cool experience. The uh, Maasai people are really, really kind, welcoming into the village here, giving us a full view into their lifestyle. And these are like some of the most amazing trips because they make you understand a completely different way of living, something that is so far from your reality. Because the Maasai, we are not staying in one area. Nomadic. Uh, nomadic. nomadic. Sometimes we move on to Kenya mm. and uh, we migrate with the cow from one place to another. Elephant, elephant down. Elephant. It oh. is very, very important to the Maasai. Because the Maasai we use for eye medicine. You're sick in your head, dung of elephant, and you put in the fire, then you're smiling. Yeah. Oh. This, you smell the smoke. So right now we're taking a little elephant dung and, and we are curing the headache. We are going to the booth to collect the dung. You gotta close it over your nose. Yeah. Oh, the elephant that will... thing's ripping hard. They are famous for their distinctive cultural rituals, high jumping dance, custom dress, and being courageous warriors. All right, we're going down to the lion's quarters here. The hunting we bring to here the and we eat here. The lion. Yeah, the lion. Yeah. That's why here we call. Yeah, yeah. A, a lion cap. Their nomadic way of life and profound reverence for the natural world can be felt amongst the Maasai people being the heart of their culture. Living with them will immerse you into generations of tribal traditions that have persisted throughout time. Let's go! Oh yeah! Oh, I've never been better, bro. <laughs> Number five on the list is to experience the Ngoro Goro. Wow, look at this place. Dude, this is massive wow. craters. So we're looking at a mountain that is literally collapsed into the ground here, which is often described as the eighth wonder of the world. So the boys have spotted some rhinos and a whole bunch of different types of animals down there. Ngorongoro is an extinct volcanic caldera in northern Tanzania's eastern Great Rift Valley, about 75 miles or 120 kilometers west of the city of Arusha. The caldera is a whopping 10 to 12 miles wide and covers 102 square miles or 264 square kilometers. The huge, continuous crater of Ngorongoro is the main remains of a big active volcano that collapsed inward following a catastrophic eruption 2.5 million years ago oh these are millions of years old right 1.84 million years ago the first known fossil remains a major open area where many species live amongst each other from rhinos to zebras there are so many you will spot when you're exploring this on an incredible safari number six on the list is to visit pemba island this place is a hidden gem with woodlands mangrove swamps secluded beaches lagoons and tidal sandbanks pemba is a well-kept secret as few have ventured here allowing its natural beauty to flourish nearly undisturbed Disturbed. Pemba has a few towns and hotels, which makes it a destination for those adventurous travelers. Number seven on the list is to visit Stone Town, which is the cultural heart of Zanzibar. Cruising through the city here, it's a really nice walk through town. And as you can see, we've got new souks coming in here. It's not open yet, under construction. 
But just an absolute hustle and bustle in this city. Ooh, we got fresh Zanzibar jerseys. And uh, how much is it? 45. Oh, 45. Oh, shooting, oh, shooting. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, 45 is too much. Uh, you took your last price, okay. 45,000? That's uh, almost like $35. Thank you, Thank you brother. I, I would settle for 20. 20,000? All right, I got to try it on, brother. Call me the Tanzanian. Me, me, Tanzania. Yeah, it's well in Tanzania. How much? 20,000, thank you very much. Asante Kaka. Okay, I couldn't Asante. 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 Started at 45,000, settled for 20,000. So just about 10 bucks for these. That's what I've seen as market price. Some of them have actually been selling for even cheaper than that. Wow, squids, all these big fish, little fish. A big, maybe a red snapper, is that what that is? This place is massive, guys. I was surprised to hear that if you're a man living in Tanzania, you're the one expected to do all of the shopping. So now we're entering into the uh, spices. Look at People this. People of Zanzibar, they drink a lot of tea. This is your specialty, because you're a, uh, yeah, yeah. you know a lot about I'm herbs. I'm a herbalist. Herbalist, yeah. yeah. When I mix ginger with turmeric, with other stuff, I can cure a variety of diseases. Wow, see? yeah, super colorful are what you'll see most commonly in Zanzibar. They love all the colors. Stone Town has brought all known cultures of mankind together for nearly a century as a spice, silk, and trading hub. From old colonial buildings to new and upscale modern dining. Memory for the slaves, as you can see here. The slaves with the uh, chains attaching them, you know, you can look closely and see the, uh, the sadness in there. You got some nice options. Mumble. Oh, well, we're, going, we're going into the depths. All right, so we're in the slave chamber right now. So during the slave trade, these two underground rooms were used to keep slaves before being taken to the market for auctioning. And as you can see, That's the quarters cool. are very, very tight. Really, really just terrifying to look in here and imagine what it was like. This was for women and children. The other side for gentle slaves. Exactly. Little food, poor ventilation, no toilet. High tide of the creek comes all the way in, low tide washed out. It might be part of the advertising that he came from Africa, fight with lion, fight with crocodile, cross the ocean, never been to the ocean, stay on the chamber, and he's still alive, so the price was high. That was marketing style of that time. Approximately 16,000 slaves per year for 400 years, over 4.5 million slaves was sold from this island to the Arab world. Look at this door. But in old ancient India where the tribe fought one another, they train the battle elephant that will go and smash the fortresses and invade. So in India, they spike the door with long spike of iron to prevent elephant attack. In Zanzibar, wow. they put sharp pointed brass for the sign of wealth. Because people above 70, 80, they are sitting here instead of staying lonely in the house. They come here, they get to talk, they see the people and they help improve. Oh, instead wow. of just staying inside the house. That's really good. Keeps them happy. Keeps I'm going to come here when I'm older. Yeah, exactly. Come hang out in Stone yeah. Town. Yeah, That's the move, bro. Over. Getting over to what looks to be like an old fortress. Yeah. All right. Look at this. They've repurposed the fort into a massive market Oh, and festival area. They dig, dig, dig this area. They found a, a Portuguese uh, bishop. Wow, Portuguese bishop underneath all the... Uh, 400 soldiers. 400 soldiers. Uh -huh. Portuguese bishop. And oh, it's a real human? Yeah, human, yeah. Oh, you can just pick them up? Yeah, he's wow. everywhere here and when they dig. Wow. So <laughs> those are bones. He's literally holding someone's remains. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, brother. A place where history is etched into the coral stone buildings and winding alleyways. Zanzibar, it's been a while! The best way to get around Zanzibar is by car, just because it's a big island. I mean, where we're staying is literally an hour and 17 minutes, and that's just to go to the east side of the island. So I have a feeling if we want to explore a lot of it, it's going to involve quite a bit of driving around. Pretty chill driving. We are driving on the left side of the road, which means you just got to remember that the, your depth of perception is a bit off when you're driving in like on the other side, but we're actually paying 30 US per day for this car and I'm sure we'll probably spend 15, 20 bucks a day on gas, if that. With its sugar white dunes and crystal blue seas, Zanzibar Island is a little piece of heaven in the middle of the Indian Ocean. The uh, coastline right here and beautiful, beautiful water with a lot of people swimming. You know, you got a bunch of resorts. Look yeah. at these boats in front of you. Look yeah, at this exactly. clear ocean. This water is literally hot right now. The shores of the Indian Ocean meet the continent of Africa at this point, producing not just a picture-perfect beach, but also a cross-cultural melting pot of history and culture. In addition, it is a perfect way to relax on the serene shoreline. Oh, that looks delicious, brother. These are babies? Yeah. 
Look at these little guys. And they're gonna be let right into the ocean? Oh, oh, attack, okay, wow. attacking them. Down boy. Okay, nice. Oh, down boy. This one's the aggressive one. He's just knocking around all of his bros. That is massive. How old are those turtles? The biggest one is more than 40 years, but he's not been here from the previous time. He's the ones get caught in the accident from the fisherman net. They oh, put wow. it here, they have an attention, and then they get released back to the sea. Look at how big that thing is. We call it green because. Guys, they're literally like about this long. When here that we're uncertain whether to recommend the turtle sanctuary or not. So one thing I'll recommend is there's a bunch of them. So there might be some with good and bad reputations. This one seems uh, like it's got a great reputation. They keep the turtles going and in a couple days they'll be uh, releasing them out to the ocean. Oh. Kilimanjaro! Kilimanjaro, here we are! Kilimanjaro! Known for its permanent snow cap, Mount Kilimanjaro attracts climbers from all around the world. The journey is beginning. Uh, what's the uh, total time to get up to where we're going? From here? Yeah. I think we can use four hours. Four hours. Five. And then back is another two hours? No, we can use maybe two hours. Okay. So for now we can use six hours up to seven. So total six to seven hour hike. Yes. All right, so this is going to be a good workout then. Yeah. But yeah, guys, really nice hike here. I think it's not going to be too strenuous. We were going up a couple thousand meters, but it's like an extremely slow elevation. Hello! Hello! So this is a nice little camp here. Seems like that's one of the options to explore this area, stay overnight. Walking up Kilimanjaro is like walking through a botanical garden with diverse flora and fauna at each height. But the good news is if you're not a mountain climber or hobbyist mountain climber that likes to get to the peak like I am, you're getting some serious elevation here. <sighs> Whoa, look at this. Where that? Whoa! Oh, oh, Alright. After hiking for two hours. Hey, we were ready for this, were you, Mikey? Right, rocking. But the reason why I'm huffing and puffing, everyone is, and it feels so much harder is because since we're so high, there's uh, not as much oxygen. You can do just a day hike up like my friends and I did and still explore and experience one of the peaks of Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, once you get to this part, you really start to see a lot more. When we were hiking all out through there, you know, when you're on flatland, it's a bit harder to see. Congratulations for making it. it to the top. You got a medal now. Oh, good news, good oh, news. Yeah. So this is Maliki. He is from this part of Tanzania, yeah? And you're running this whole tour company, right? Absolutely. And for how long have you been doing it? Yeah, oh my God. I just have a like, of just like five years right now. Five years. And uh, we were recommended by another blogger here as one of the most knowledgeable guides. What's the name of your uh, company? Uh, Migration Tanzania Safari. Migration Tanzania, Tanzania Safari. Safari. And we're gonna have a blast. Thank you so much. Here we go. Thank you, brother. Number 10 on the list is to visit Dar es Salaam, also known as the Haven of Peace. We're driving on the left side of the road here, and we're gonna be showing you all around the city over the next couple hours before the sun sets. The city is actually a fast paced place known for being the largest city and financial hub in Tanzania. Dar es Salaam is not the capital city of. Tanzania it is actually the old capital, but it's still kind of treated as the capital because it's the modern hub of Tanzania. With a population of just over 6 million people, Dar es Salaam is the largest city in East Africa. Man, it's interesting. I love it. It's full of life. Mambo poa! Mambo poa! Mambo poa! I'll tell you guys, lively, here's so much going on. Markets everywhere. We've got all different types of things you can buy here. Fresh, fresh chickens right there, whoa. All right, oh, chickens. Lots of bikes being sold in this area. We're gonna look like the local team. Yeah, exactly. Simba, Simba, Simba! <laughs> oh yeah, Simba brother there, there he is. You guys watching, you're hearing a lot of Simba and yelling here. This is how we make friends. We've got a nice strong machine that's basically starting to rate up. <laughs> Another one done. All right, it's getting intense here. We got pineapples, watermelons, a little bit of everything right in this area. Well, the markets get much bigger once you cross past the uh, vegetable market. With their diverse food cuisines, making it a must for all of you food lovers. Oh, the seafood pasta has arrived. Wow, look at those prawns are fresh out of the ocean right there. The man is eating like a king. Anyways, guys, that's where we're going to go ahead and end today's video. I just want to say thank you so much for those of you who watch it all the way until now. As you can probably guess after watching this video, Tanzania is incredible. And this video only lightly scratches the surface of all of the amazing places you can visit. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to include a couple links below as well as information on how you can book a safari with our good friend Malaki, who showed us an incredible time. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.